Hello, everyone. Welcome to Caterpillar's first quarter 2022 financial results. I'm Rusty Dunn. Glad to be alongside our chief financial officer, Andrew Bonfield. It's been a, a couple of years, Andrew. Great to be in the same room with you. How are it, you? It's great, Rusty, and it's great to be back in the studio together, and it's great to be able to talk about a very good set of results for the first quarter of 2022. Absolutely. Always a lot more fun to talk about the numbers here in the same room together, so we appreciate that. Well, um, I'll let you have some opening comments, and then we'll get into some of those key numbers, yeah, so take it away. First of all, again, just thank everybody for, uh, again, another strong quarter's first quarter performance. Uh, focus of all our employees, despite all the distractions out there, the supply chain challenges that are ongoing, uh, the issues around the globe that we're seeing from a geopolitical perspective, that focus on actually being able to deliver on our profitable growth goals has is, is been amazing. It's really been about meeting challenges uh, one more time, one more quarter, certainly. Let's get into some of the key numbers, start top line sales and revenues, as we always do. Sales and revenues uh, up 1.7 billion or 14% uh, percent to $13.6 billion, rising across all three primary segments. Uh, underlying sales growth uh, to users were very strong. Again, also on top of that, we saw price realization and also saw a bigger increase in dealer inventories year over year. Also, service revenues remain strong. All right, Andrew, and how about uh, the bottom line, profit per share this quarter? So just a profit per share was $2.88 uh, compared to $2.87 last year. On a gap basis, it was $2.86 compared to $2.77 uh, last year. Two cents difference due to restructuring expenses. Overall, if you look through the profit and loss account, price realization and volume more than offset increased manufacturing costs. And we also saw increases in both SG&A and R&D expenses as we invested behind our growth initiatives to drive our long-term strategic objectives. And I know we always appreciate some comments uh, about the two C's, cash and capital. Where do we stand there? Yeah, so overall, uh, still have a very strong cash position. We have an enterprise cash of $6.5 billion at the end of the uh, first quarter. That's down $2.7 billion from the fourth quarter of last year. Some of that was due to the fact we did see a cash outflow this, this quarter. Part of that was due to the reinstatement of short-term incentive compensation, uh, which was $1.3 billion versus zero the year before. We also saw a working capital outflow of about $600 million, mainly relating to production stores, inventory we're holding, basically to get ready to, because we know the demand is there, just being able to make sure that we can alleviate some of those supply chain challenges. In addition, we invested about $800 million of cash into slightly longer dated securities in order to improve the yield we earn on those cash balances. Yeah, a strong first quarter. What were your key takeaways be for this, Andrew, some of the headlines coming out of this first three months of the year? Well, again, good start to the year, strong performance, uh, starting, you know, we still expect for the full year to see uh, price more than offset manufacturing cost increases. But it's a challenging environment out there. We all know about the well-known supply chain challenges. Uh, I would just like to say thank you again to all our employees for working safely in a very difficult environment uh, and making sure that we are actually able to deliver our bottom line targets. Excellent. Appreciate your perspective on those numbers. And every quarter, we always like to go beyond the numbers and have a conversation with some folks from different parts of the business. And in this case, it was solar digital. So um, everything on the technology side of the solar turbines business and how that's helping grow that business. Great conversation. Let's watch. Hello, everybody. Today I'm out at Solar Digital, and it's actually nice to be here in person. And I'm here today with Marco Leon, who's our director of Solar Digital. Marco, can you tell us what we do on the digital side at Solar? Yeah, nice to be here. Uh, yeah, our team is really here to support our customers and help make them successful. We have a whole global team focused on, on providing digital solutions that help our customers. Marco, perhaps you can just start by explaining what Solar Turbines actually do. Right. Yeah, it's a great question. So we make industrial gas turbines, so basically land-based jet engines in the you know thousand horsepower up to thirty thousand horsepower size range that primarily run on natural gas, uh, but we are looking at running on hydrogen and other types of fuels uh, as we transition into the future. And the whole point about connectivity and digital is about ultimately helping customers be more successful. Can you explain how those digital connections actually help our customers? 
Yeah, there's really three areas that we like to focus on of how we can help our customers. You know, the first is how we can reduce downtime. So both planned and unplanned downtime and helping our customers, you know, primarily through machine data and data analytics and, and leveraging the data to help reduce downtime is the first. Um, then we look at how we can help them lower their total lifecycle costs. And really the key area there has been how do we move from time-based maintenance and overhaul to condition-based overhaul and maintenance. Um, and then the third exciting new area is around optimization and helping our customers reduce their carbon footprint. You know, we can look at, you know, the effects of carbon capture and hydrogen and so kind of leveraging digital to kind of help our customers on that entire journey from operations to kind of a future, you know, carbon neutral state. And obviously sustainability, I've talked a lot about it and we talk a lot about it as a company. That, as you say, is a new area. What is the focus there and how, how are you getting, doing that? That's really exciting. I mean, we, we have the opportunity now to look beyond just our equipment and really help our customers, you know, visualize their entire energy system. And we've really focused on providing operational type optimization solutions. So how can a power generation customer, you know, run the machine at the right power, depending on fuel prices and electrical prices and kind of balance the environmental impact and, and the economic impact and make the right decisions. So in the gas transmission space, we can model the entire pipeline and provide solutions that really look at how can you move you know, the, a certain amount of gas in the most efficient way possible. And then even the oil and gas upstream sector, how can we help our customers you know, reduce their spending reserve and just operate the right amount of equipment to really keep their platforms running without um, burning too much fuel. Some of the tools you're using are really, really best in class, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, I love, we love to say it's like not just about software, so it's all about people, process, and technology. And we have, you know, fleet managers who sit in the time and space of our customers that are really like looking at the data, you know, together with our customers and working hand in hand with them. But yeah, the more we can visualize and provide feedback to them and give them information, you know, in their phone, you know, in their pocket, you know, we have customers that talk about, you know, just the peace of mind knowing that they can check on their equipment from anywhere. That's really when customers begin to realize you know the power of the solutions we're providing and leads particularly on our services side as well solar services are really important yeah, solar is really well known for its service uh, model and yeah I think digital is really an enabler to take that service business to the next level well thank you very much Marco really appreciate it great work you guys are doing here and uh, appreciate your time again yeah it was awesome having you guys here thank you So a great conversation, Andrew, and what an example of using digital as an enabler to, to do what we need to do with that. Yes, and you know, using the technology to enable services growth, also to help value for the customer, to improve uptime, uh, is you know, really fantastic what they've been doing at Solar. A great example, and a great example for all of us on how to drive service revenues. Yeah, really exciting stuff. Thanks for that conversation. Good to see you and hope to do it again soon. Great to see you too, Rusty. Meantime, thanks for watching, everybody. As always, be safe in everything you do. Take care. Have a great day. We'll see you soon.